we'll go ahead and get started. So um, thank you everybody who is uh, currently on, uh, still expecting a little bit more, but uh, let's go ahead and get this started. Um, today's uh, webinar, we have uh, quite a few people here in uh, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. So we'll, we'll go around and introduce ourselves, but the event today uh, that we wanna walk through is, is really how to educate. And it's anything from a customer perspective uh, to what we do to educate our, our staff and, and new people who join our team, and then uh, how we educate the local community as well. Um, and, and hopefully there's some takeaways from what we're doing and how uh, other people can share it within their industry. Um, so I have uh, quite the panel today, uh, just a, a heads up that this is uh, recorded and it will be sent out. So if you have to hop off at any point, um, you know, feel free to do so. And again, you know, the recordings will be sent out uh, for future viewing. Uh, with that, <coughs> go ahead and uh, go around the table here and start with, oh, too far, well, not too far. Um, so in front of me here, we'll go ahead and start with uh, Jonathan Johnson. So Jonathan, give us uh, give us your name, your, your title, and uh, your favorite Christmas movie. Let's do that. Oh, exciting. My name is Jonathan Johnson. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I'm a regional sales consultant at Facebook Products, and uh, my favorite uh, Christmas movie self. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I am Kim Haynes. I'm the HR manager here at Facebook Products. Um, live local here in Lawrenceburg, and I'm going to give my sentimental favorite of White Christmas. Very nice. Ooh, very nice. So my name is Tim Weber. I'm the vice president of marketing. I live in Aurora, Indiana, and I'm going to second White Christmas. All right. Ooh. I'm Rachel Weber. I am a regional sales consultant, as seen as Jonathan, um, and mine is The Grinch with Jim Carrey. Very nice. Classic. My name's Mary. I'm digital marketing associate, and I'm going to have to say The Grinch, but I like the original one. I also like the animated one now. Very so nice. Very nice. Two good ones. Uh, so, and then I'm Tim Williams, uh, national sales manager here at Baseball Products, uh, and then my I'm a big, uh, big time uh, classic. So, you know, a lot of what you guys said on the, the movie side, I, I love there, but um, you got to go Christmas vacation. Uh, the humor there is just, <laughs> you know, nonstop and uh, one liners, no matter when I watch it uh, every year, I think it's, it's just as funny as it was last time. So um, just a, a quick reminder, I just mentioned it, but if you do have questions, pose them in the chat. Uh, we'll try to get them answered live with our panel today. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so on the very first uh, kickoff here, so um, why, you know, education, obviously, I think everybody believes is a very important thing, uh, whether uh, you're, you're trying to better yourself, better your company, better your industry. Uh, we're a big believer of that, um, both learning from each other here at Batesville Products and uh, trying to get out in the, the marketplace um, in the greater Cincinnati area here uh, to learn more from others. Um, but from an overall uh, perspective here, you know, education is important not only for our customers and the workforce, uh, but also to help educate the, the next generation. Uh, so, you know, a lot, of, a lot of companies across the globe right now are working through how do we hire people, uh, who's the right fit, uh, different generation crossovers, and, and really trying to make sure that uh, employees are fits within companies, but within environments as well. Um, so it's very important. Um, from a customer perspective, uh, Batesville Products has a lot of different online resources, uh, and you can check them out on our website. Um, but you know, I, what I want to do is kind of, uh, let's call on Tim Weber here. So where, why did we build this? You know, what does this do? Um, and, and who does it really reach out to? So our, the online resources are really geared towards customers and potential customers. And it's, it's to give our, those folks a library, uh, a place they can go and get their, answer, their questions answered. Um, so we have a large office where the sales and marketing group all sits, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's pretty much a bullpen. And hearing, uh, for instance, Tim Williams or Rachel talk, most of the time what they're doing is, is giving out information. You know? And I think a better informed customer is going to be a better customer, you know, and a long-term customer. Uh, so if we can be the, you know, the expert and help them out and move them, because again, we do this all day long, right? That's all we do is castings. Most of our customers use castings and get involved in design issues with castings once in a while. So for them to come to us, I think, is exactly what we want to have happen. So you're working on trying to be the uh, the matter expert. 
whether exactly. it's a, a casting that fits within BPI or a casting that's used elsewhere. Exactly. And it's not just the casting, but maybe the secondaries. You know, do we machine this? Is this a powder coat? Is powder coat going to give us an issue? How do we address, you know, outgassing and powder coating, that sort of thing. So, you know, those are all things that we've been dealing with for years. And again, to just to give that information out, they feel confident coming back to us again. So very cool. So Jonathan, where, where have you seen this as a, uh, a benefit maybe to a customer or a prospect that you, you may not necessarily be trying to land a project, but you're trying to help them understand uh, different design features maybe for, uh, for casting. So where, where have you found it? important for your customers and prospects? Yeah, I mean, I think I point people to the design guide almost daily. Um, design engineers, when they're coming up to us, um, you know, how am I going to put your casting and your design into our process? And I think it's invaluable to be able to point them to that video clips we have on the, um, on the website to just kind of do a better job of explaining it or also reiterating what we are telling them at the same time. So what's kind of interesting too, and I don't know if you've, you've heard this directly from, from people you're working on hiring, but uh, the number of people that I've signed in interviews on that talk about, hey, we know this and that, we've seen this and that on your it website. Is. And they, they, it seems like even from a, from a hiring perspective, people are going there to educate themselves just to know more about what we do, but also more about the industry and what the industry does. Sure. Um, a lot of our candidates, when they come in and we start talking about what we do, they're like, oh, yeah, I went to the website and I saw your videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are such great videos and it really draws our future employees in. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I know, Kim, you started a year ago and I started the year before that. And I don't know if you did the same thing, but right before I went in or I heard about Batesville products, I went on, I just binged all the videos. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love the what, history. Yeah. What is, yeah. yeah, what's the history? What's, what's the history? permanent mold? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's designers out there too that may not even know what castings are. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, from a from a, a metal perspective or, or design perspective, they may be mocking something up that they think goes plastics, and in reality, it should be metal, or you know, vice versa, or they design it for a specific process, and it should be a different process. Yeah, that's um, why the goal for this isn't just pushing permanent mold and explaining that process because it is a lesser known process, but also here's what sand casting is, here's mm -hmm. other die casting, other manufacturing methods that might work for your project. Yeah, I like, you know, at least one of the, the blog posts that we had used on here was the, uh, like the Pete Rose bat. I mean, there's there's a ton of different industries. I think BPI is in 75 different industries that uh, currently use our type of castings. So the amount of different industries that are out there that need castings is, is pretty extensive. And just educating everybody from designers to end users on on what that actually means and how, how to get involved in it. So Jonathan talked about design guide. So I think you you and Rachel use this pretty well. So uh, how do you, how do you guys use it? Um, yeah, I mean the first thing I do when I have the conversation with the customer is point them to design guide because if they do the design up front, they're going to end up helping save money on the back end because they're going to go ahead and design for the process they're going to use. And you mentioned plastics. You mentioned different processes. I talked to a customer yesterday, and it wasn't a fit for a permanent mold, but able to use the design guides, the resources, and tell them, hey, it's better fit for a different process. And I think it's just one of the things I'd pride myself on and BPI overall is, hey, if we don't have the specific answer for you, we're going to point you in the right direction to be able to solve your problems. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think a lot of times, too, because like Mary said, permanent mold is not a well-known um, casting process for people who are not in the industry. So when they come to, when they're searching for castings, they're like, they call us like, I think we may need you, but we're not sure we're able to walk through with them kind of what it is that they're looking for. And we're able to say, okay, this does sound like it's a fit. Let me send you this design guide. Have your look over with your engineer to see if these parameters fall in with what you are willing to design your product around. And then we can work together to either help quote the part or make it for you. So I think it's um, a really nice way to kind of get them familiar with designing the part as well. Very nice. So from a customer perspective, I'm gonna put a little spin on this, very, very useful in helping educate prospects, customers, even just people you know, that are just interested in castings, you know, having this information out in the market. But what we did at Batesville Products is we've, we've taken that and we went kind of a next step and developed it out into what we call 
the Casting Academy. Um, so Rachel, I know you, you and Mary have put a lot of time into this. So if you guys want to kind of explain a little bit of the background of what's going on here and why essentially we took our design guide and, and tried to educate internally uh, as well. Yeah, um, I think the original pros, uh, project kind of kicked off was because me and Mary started a few months uh, away from each other. And so we both came from um, design backgrounds, but not um, necessarily manufacturing background so um, a big part of our company is we always want to be continuously learning and so they wanted us to dig deep and figure out how we can educate ourselves as well as build a program that can educate future employees that come into the company so we kind of just started building a list of every step in the process it takes to go through our company and worked with supervisors, um, foremans, engineers, and just slowly learned the whole process and built an academy that now we can um, have new hires come in and take the course. And it probably takes a couple of weeks, you say a few hours a week, um, but it really gives them a deep dive into what we do internally. Mm -hmm. This is a, it's a living, breathing program. So I'm just, Yesterday, we finished going back through it, making sure everything's well maintained, that the information's great, because the better maintained it is, then the better trained our employees are uh, from top down, and then the better our products are, better quality, less scrap. People really understand what they're doing, and they see how their function provides value. So this is taking, again, you know, from the, the sales and the customer side of educating designers and in, in bringing it internally. In, helping our employees really understand the details behind each individual job that is done here at Batesville Products. And I know we're, we're going to get into it here in a minute, but, um, you know, this is a big part of our, our uh, pay for skill program uh, and really how we have employees uh, understand the direct line of where they can go within the company and where they can go within the industry. And Kim, I know you've, you've probably been through this thing quite a bit. Um, but but what kind of benefits and in, in, um, you know details that you're hearing from employees or um, that you're seeing uh, as you share this type of information out there? Well, the first thing from an HR perspective, um, this is a great training program. A lot of companies don't have a training program. So when I came in, the wheels were already turning on this project and I jumped in helping head first into it. Um, but yeah, just to have a training program is really huge. Um, for us, it's about driving that consistency um, from employee to employee as they learn to produce our products, understand what we do here. Um, it also gives our employees um, a career path. You know, they see as they can learn different types of machining or different levels of the casting um, that they, number one, they can earn more money because it's knowledge. And number two, they can continue to progress. And, you know, my goal is I love to promote from within. So when I'm looking for the big payoff here is that we home produce our next quality inspectors or our next leads, yeah. our next yeah. supervisors. This is huge for us because our main goal is we want people to come to work at Batesville Products um, and want to stay here. And you know, this really gives us an opportunity um, to let them see that they do have that available to them. Um, as we've rolled this out to all of our employees now, um, they love it, especially, you know, our new hires that come in because again, we're educating them. They can see the path that they can go. The employees that have been here for a while and they're, we're taking them through it also, just like they were new employees. Um, you know, they're learning some things that maybe they forgot about how to do something correctly. Again, we're trying to drive that consistency from employee to employee. So it doesn't matter which shift you're on, you should get the same part every time because we're all doing it the same way. Yeah, I think it opens up some, some cross-training uh, mm -hmm. possibilities too. So, um, you know, understanding the other tasks that everybody else that works here may be doing that they aren't necessarily doing themselves on a daily basis, but understanding what it takes to get to the part where they may currently see it. So if they're in the machine shop, you know, from a casting perspective where they aren't casting, but now they understand in more detail how that casting ended up the way it is in their hands. Sure. And the, the you know, all the hard work that it goes in, you know, 
each department goes into it and gets the part where it is. Yeah, um, I'm a huge, I, I like to know the end to end process as I call it, because I like to know where I fit in. Um, so this is definitely given all of our employees that vision to see that. Um, like you said, we did have people here who's machining, you know, maybe they haven't been to the foundry, but it gives them the opportunity to understand, again, what is their process up here? And it's also driving, I think, some real good teamwork between these, even though we're at two different locations. I think we want to make sure that we all feel like we're saying, you know, part of the same process. So this has really um, opened up, I think, a lot of eyes for different people, um, whether it's your foundry wondering what happens when it gets to the machine shop or to the machine shop and you're wondering what happened before it got to you. It definitely um, is opening those doors for everyone to understand and have a just a better understanding of what our process is end to end. Yeah. So, uh, Tim, you know, being a senior leader in the company, I've heard quite a few positive stories come from uh, you just experiencing this program in play out on the floor. Um, but, you know, what, what would you say is a, a big benefit from this program as a company? I think this year, the two biggest things are the, the, the uh, paper skills and, and the book as far as our employees, because like, like Kim was saying, they can see a path, you know, this is, this is where I can be and this is a time frame. okay? Uh, it's not just, um, oh, let's do a year in review, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. I think we just we just literally had that conversation that those are probably more detrimental than helpful. Uh, so this is an ongoing daily thing. I mean, they can every quarter they can progress financially, um, but they're all more more valuable to us long term. You know, um, and yeah. the fitting in. Where do I fit into this organization? You yeah, know? I think you, you hit it on the head too. You, you hear a lot of studies out there talking about if you do annual reviews and only annual reviews, and you're not checking in with your team or you're not meeting weekly, that you're, you're reviewing your goals once a year. Then, right. mm -hmm. you know, the pay for skill program and the casting academy you know, were developed that, like Kim was saying, that you, you have a clear indication on how you're going, where you're going, uh, you know, in the benefit of additional pay in doing it. Yeah, and we meet with our employees every 90 days. It's a 90-day cycle um, where we go through and we review um, what they've done the past 90 days, what they've learned, um, what they still need to work at, which you know kind of help them decide which direction they're going. And they love the feedback. And again, it's the opportunity to earn you know additional hourly rates um, every 90 days. That's huge. So they see an instant payoff for the work that, that they're doing. But it, it's also created the, the manager level reviews that they're meeting. Oh yeah. Daily, weekly, yep. you know, where in, in years past, it may be, okay, we're, um, you know, not necessarily either here or some other company, but now they're reviewing it every day and, yep. and saying, Hey, uh, you know, we did a good job here. We can progress better here. Um, and really show that, that, and, in, and insight really, you know, mm -hmm. what's my next step. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone's saying talent shortage. We need people. How do we get people? Mm -hmm. And this has been a big solution for us mm -hmm. to be able to attract people and retain them because they see a future with our company. They see that plan laid out for them. They're like, I can see myself here in 10 years and I know exactly where I'm going to be. And I know mm -hmm. that I'm going to grow. I'm not going to be stuck in this same spot, same entry level position. Yeah, right. I think you're, uh, you hit it. The, the company's got to show an interest in employees wanting mm -hmm. to grow, too. Yeah. You know, if you go to a company and you, you get a job and that's all you do and you don't have any aspirations to get any better, are you going to enjoy that? Yeah. Probably not, yeah. right? Yeah, they talk about now turnover, you know, somebody lasts a job maybe two to three years. Um, feels like it's shorter than that, just going through all the hiring that we've been doing. But um, yeah, and you know, the other nice thing about this, it, like I said, it gives them the opportunity to learn multiple things um, with the cross training and everything. But also for us, it allows us to use that skill. So if we're backed up in polishing, we've got people who are trained in polishing and we can utilize them to help us in that department. So again, it's building that teamwork and camaraderie, I think, amongst all our employees to work together. Mm -hmm. So we talked about, you know, benefits from a customer prospect perspective. We talked about educating internal employees, but there's people that, you know, even we talked about the design side, you know, people come fresh out of college or fresh out of high school uh, or technical college, or, um, you know, just interested in design that may not understand or may not uh, grasp 
the full information needed to design, um, you know, in this, in this industry, in the space, uh, you know, again, we mentioned we're in 75 different industries, same thing from food equipment, medical equipment, lighting, um, you know, down to just raw castings that come straight out and are shipped to the customer that way. So high end, high function uh, need down to, um, you know, something we, we did in years past, but casted like the, the anthills that you would see on like a YouTube video. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we don't do that, those types of art or decorative castings, but uh, how do we educate people? Um, and th this is something we've been doing for quite a while, but uh, Mary, you, you jumped in, you know, feet first on, on doing these, these field trips. What, what have you seen and why do we do it? Well, I mean, go home, ask your kids, ask your grandkids, nieces, nephews, ask them what manufacturing is or what they think it looks like. Because from what you know, it's it's a completely different picture in their mind. Because that's what we've seen. We've had so many groups come through here and they're all fascinated by all of the technology and all of the hands-on, like, oh, you actually get to use those tools. Like, that's really cool. <laughs> So they, they have no idea. They don't talk about manufacturing in schools. So giving them the opportunity to actually come in and see what it's like is a huge game changer. And all of the teachers are always really excited too because it adds on to their STEM learning program that they're trying to really push right now. Um, we had, we've also had undergrad students. So just a month ago or so we had some local community college students and high school students come through and they were specifically interested in machining and then a group that was interested in engineering, but they had only seen it classroom level. They hadn't actually been inside a manufacturing facility before. So it was really cool for them because they actually got to see, oh, this is actually what I wanna do when I'm older and this is the desk I'm gonna sit at. And it was very interesting. They loved it. Yeah, it's. <sighs> So, so Jonathan, you know, when we're, when we're walking through a plant, Mary, Mary just talked about the difference in, in manufacturing from where it is now and where it used to be. And I think you have a unique experience uh, working remote from uh, St. Louis and in that territory that when you come here, you get to see the big leaps and bounds where same thing with, with, with customers or, or outsiders that will visit the, the plant even a year ago. I mean, that there's stuff in manufacturing today that you didn't see last month or the month before when you were here yeah i mean the technology's grown so much i mean we didn't even have one robot when i started and now we have robots in every department it seems like um, you know from the polishing the sawing um the cobots just helping assist that uh it'd be neat for any kid to come in and see what they could be working on and what they could be doing versus what you think you're you're going to be doing so yeah it's been eye-opening and really fun to kind of see all the changes each time you come in it's uh it's neat to look forward to seeing new stuff so yeah i think it helps your employees too i mean we got mm -hmm. tenured employees that were talking retirement mm -hmm. and because yeah. of robotics are sticking around for five four years. right exactly yeah. yeah yeah it just helps out with that it helps them too yeah. it helps the employees to mm -hmm. lighten their load and assist them in medial tasks it's great so it's just a, it's a different space i mean it, it you think manufacturing back in the day it's all manual and, and labor intensive and and Baseball products and a lot of other people within our industry are trying to change the way that looks. And, mm -hmm. um, and we, we welcome visits, not all at once. <laughs> uh, we do welcome visits. So, and, and, you know, as you see in some of the pictures that are shown here uh, from the student perspective, like giving tours, uh, you know, showing like Jonathan had mentioned the different robotics cobots uh, in, in different uh, technology that, that's been added in the manufacturing facilities versus, you know, what used to be highly labor intensive back in the day mm -hmm. uh, isn't anymore. I mean, even even the bottom left corner picture there where we're, we have crane assist everywhere. Um, so trying to make it easier for employees, uh, but make it more fun too. you know, technology, adding that oh, technology yeah. perspective to it. So I think all the kids in their head, they're like, oh, when I'm an adult, I have to sit at a desk all day and be on a computer and write boring emails. But they see like, oh, there's other options, too. I can actually, I enjoy being active. I can see myself in manufacturing. Yeah, like like working with your hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Even our engineers who you think might sit at a desk are rarely at their desks. Yeah. You have to go <laughs> run around finding them in the shop to get answers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Tim, Tim, you had mentioned um, this. And... Uh, 
you know, from my, my experience, and I'll, I'll tell our marketing team here, we've gotten a lot of uh, great feedback, but maybe not everybody has seen this. Um, so, so Tim, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the background of, of what this is and how it came about. So we went to, I went to a, uh, a show in Louisville, an equipment show, and I visited a booth of some equipment we bought for trail building. Uh, and one of the things they had was a children's book, and they were actually pushing products. So each page was about a particular product. But I started thinking about it and met along the lines of what could we do like for giveaways as shows. Um, so I came back and me and Mary got together and, and kind of came up with a, a storyline and um, photos of the guy, of the different um, uh, activities that we do. And what this book does, it walks somebody, a young person, a first or second grader, through all of our processes, starting in engineering, ending up with the uh, final product. And um, it kind of took on its own life because initially it was geared towards you guys, the sales folks. And it kind of became this thing. Well, you know what? This is this is an important thing. This is this is this is the right thing to do. To it's, it's not even like sales related anymore. No, right? you know, it's like, you know, and, and it became like let's. This is a great tool. I, I've literally probably have every kid's book that we ever bought for our our, our kid our kids and grandkids, and um, so we we're thinking well, along the lines, and this could be something that could be a, that could you know generational, and then we decided to give it all away. All right, like we talked earlier, and Mary, um, you know, she just took off with it, and um, you know, one of the first uh, images we got back for the illustration was a line drawing, and we we looked at each other and was like, oh, "This is this is a color." color book. Book. <laughs> <laughs> but then, and like, yeah. then Mary took off with it. This is sh sh so. Talk a little bit about that, the guides in particular. Yeah, so, I mean, we started out with the book, and from that, like Tim said, it just expanded. So we have activity books, too, um, some printed versions with coloring pages and different things the kids can do. And we have stickers and magnets and all kinds of stuff all about manufacturing. Um, and what's really cool is that we were able to give it a life online. So on our website now, we have a BPI for kids. So they can go and they can get the coloring pages, activities, anything, um, experiments, like little at-home simulations of permanent mold casting. So it's a really hands-on activity that they can do. But I, this morning I was reflecting, I wrote down some stats and we've actually given away 250 books to wow. 15 local schools and libraries. Very cool. So mm -hmm. it's been a book per teacher in classroom. So that's over 200 classrooms that we've reached just by teaching them more about manufacturing. Wow. And then of those, I've personally visited seven to read to students. And I tallied it up. It's over 500 students that I've read to. <laughs> so, I was losing my voice towards the end. <laughs> yeah, I had the opportunity to tag along with Mary on, uh, on one of the, the school visits in, I mean, how many, it was like four or five different classrooms brought yeah. all their kids out. And it, it was very entertaining for me. And, and Mary and I had to laugh a couple of times because, you know, you're, you're, you're just trying to educate younger uh, students who, again, may not know anything about casting or the industry or just manufacturing in, in general, um, and the questions we got, but, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, talking with Mary over the, the seven different schools that she went to, there's a lot of great kids that ask some interesting questions that are very uh, intrigued by what's going on in the manufacturing mm -hmm. space. And, and on that, I think Rachel actually had a really good story, if you want to. Oh, yeah. So it kind of just goes to show about we like to get out into our community. And Mary obviously went to the local schools. And I happened to have um, some of my cousin's kids go to that school. And they didn't know. They, I mean, the kids are young, so they have no idea what we do. And Mary went to go read to their class. And I get a text probably the next day from my cousin saying that her um, second youngest son was like, mom, I want to go work for Batesville Products. I don't know what I want to do yet, but when I get older, that's what I want to do. And so that was kind of pretty cool to hear. Yeah. Like it was a nice message to get to see that the kids are actually interested in learning about this stuff mm -hmm. and hearing mm -hmm. about it. I think the teachers were just as interested as the students. They were asking so many questions yeah. and they're like, I want to come visit. Like, I want to see your facility. I've never seen molten metal be poured. And every time when I told them that we melt the metal, it's like 
over a thousand degrees, everyone's just shocked, especially the kids. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think as, as adults, um, we've all gravitated towards this. I know when we were in Chicago for recruiting fair, um, we had the books with us and we had so many adults come by oh, really? and just say, nice. oh, you got any more of those books? You got any more of it? Yeah, it was, it was a big hit. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like the experiments you know, myself. So. The industries that we're in, American Foundry Society, Non-Ferris Foundry yep. Society, uh, you know, aluminum organization, they're all asking for more. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're talking about us on um, industry-wide uh, phone calls and, and meetings, but it's not, you know, again, we weren't in this and we still aren't in this for baseball products getting the, the notification of the rep because of this. We're, we're in this because we want to help educate, educate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the younger younger generation understanding that manufacturing is still a really cool space and it's getting cooler. Mm -hmm. You know, Jonathan mentioned all walking through and, and just the amount of robotics and, and that that's cool. Um, you know, a lot of kids these days play video games and how that even relates to like playing video games, you know? Um, so very, very cool. It's had a big response in the industries and all of the organizations we're part of, but also in the community and on social media, it's been crazy to see how much traction that, it's gained and how people were like, it's so wild that manufacturing is now kind of a part of our daily lives because mm -hmm. we see it more often. It's more frequently in front of us. Uh, we sent home every, all those over 500 kids that I read to, we sent them home with stickers and coloring pages to take home too. There was one class that we did a little activity where we built a paper robot that could use a magnet to move paper clips. And they like went home with their own cobot and it looked exactly like <laughs> looked exactly like the pictures. And I had moms emailing me the next week, like my my kid loves little Susie loves the robot. <laughs> it, it's just crazy to me how impactful that it's been on the students. But, and I, this is I think also something I think about a lot is management and the ownership embrace this. You know, this mm -hmm. wasn't a, what's the ROI on this? You know, this is like, okay, <laughs> you know, so let's see what, let's see what it looks like. So we are given a lot of latitude and um, I think long-term, I think this is a good thing. I think it's good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's special. Uh, one of the marketing groups that I'm a part of, it's like a community of a hundred marketers. Someone was like, what's your, your Hail Mary marketing idea for 2023 that you're just going to throw something out and see if it works. And this was definitely our 2022, just <laughs> dream big, yeah. see what happens. And it got way bigger than we expected. Yeah, yeah and customers are loving it, you know, yeah. as well, they have, they have kids and mm -hmm. I had a customer reach out and he goes, secretly, I just want the book for myself. And <laughs> he was excited to see it, uh, passed it around to friends and family who have small children as well. And they, they loved it. My daughter, uh, she's 11. So she's a little bit older for the book, but I read it to her and she's like, let's read that again, dad. So and she really liked it. And uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been an awesome. Uh, yeah. A lot, so. a lot of our employees are taking it home mm -hmm. and they can show their kids. This is what I do. Like, like this page, this is me. Yeah. It's hard to explain yeah. manufacturing and put it on a kid's level of understanding but I think they found a lot of value in being able to show their kids this is what I do. So, some of this is actually on our website, Living Breathing. You can yeah. download some of the coloring books. Well, there's there's an online. Uh, uh, it's a video of me video reading, reading it. it. <laughs> you know, turn the pages, and they can download it, and or they can uh, sell application. We'll send you one for free. So mm -hmm. cool. Um, so, so mentioned some of these already, but um, again, when it comes to customers and prospects, when it comes to employees, and when it even comes to educating uh, younger individuals, we we know our space very well. Uh, but there are other uh, other experts out in the industry that we uh, kind of rely on or, or talk to or uh, get information from. So within our uh, breadth of work, uh, we come across the Manufacturing Institute. The American Foundry Society and the non Founders Foundry Society uh, very frequently. Um, they are good groups uh, that have a lot of good information available uh, for free as well on websites uh, or if you reach out to them. Um, you, we also work with the uh, 
women's manufacturing uh, group. We also work with um, a lot of different round tables and groups locally that we like to get involved with because again, we, we know our space very well, but there's a lot of different uh, takeaways. You know, Tim going to a, a different utility show um, that may not be directly related to our product or our process and walking away with this book idea. Um, you know, so always, always a proponent and uh, try to promote education, whether it's by peers within your company, uh, peers within your territory or uh, um, where you are locally and really try to, to promote getting out and, and doing that type of stuff. So check, check these guys out um, for more information as well. Um, and with that, go ahead and end the uh, webinar. All right. Very good.